Hello, my name is Ken Pearson with Shaden Avionics. Today we're going to be talking about uh, how to program the Shaden Microflow. Here's an example right here of the Microflow. This one indicates in uh, liters, but uh, it'll work for the same purpose of any part number um, 91204XT 38D. The X could be a, a 1, a 7, any number of you know, numbers just depends on what. Uh, you know what indicator style you have as far as liters gallons pounds whatever it is single twin um so yeah for to start out what we're going to do is that there's these switches on the side of the microflow come looking at it from the faceplate side here you'll see four switches the second switch what you want to do is we're going to change this from a f as in foxtrot to a e as in echo this will get us into the entry mode so that we can adjust the k factors of uh, the transducer that's associated with this indicator Every transducer will have a K factor. Here's the body of one of our transducers. Um, you can see on this one, for example, the K factor is 19.94. Um, kind of tough to see, but hopefully you can get that out right there. You'll see a red sticker, and on that red sticker, there'll be a stamp for the K factor. K factor is the amount of pulses per gallon that the transducer is sending out to the indicator. Now we need to program that in the indicator so that they match up. So 19.94 is 19,940 pulses per gallon. So what we're gonna do to start, before we have power turned on, we're gonna change that second switch that's in F. We're gonna change that switch to E. So we're gonna rotate one click counterclockwise and you'll see from uh, this, it'll be F E zero zero on the microflow. Key is that second switch. You wanna make sure that's in E. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the power on And when you turn power onto the unit, when it's in that switch position E, it's basically going to get you into the entry mode. So on page 26 of the manual, you'll see a page that looks like this. Essentially what this is, is that it's giving you details about what, what each one of the letters means as you go through the programming instruction menu. So you can see right off to the start here, we have uh, a K factor of uh, 29.00 programmed in. What it does is it drops off the least significant digit. So 29.00 means 29,000 pulses per gallon or 29.0. So what we need to do, because we had our, our K factor of our transducer, remember was 19.94. We're gonna adjust this 29.0 down to 19.94. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the add full switch and we're gonna ramp that down until it gets to uh, the 19.94. So as you hold this, it's gonna go down and down and down and it kind of goes slow to start, but it'll gradually get, you know, work up in speed. And we wanna keep on going and hold that until it goes to 9.94. I'm gonna keep holding this and look at it so that we don't overshoot it, but as soon as you get close to it, you want to uh, release that at the full switch. Full will decrease the K factor, and add, as you can see, will, will make it go back up. And we wanna to get to 19.94. So, there we are. So now we have 19.94 as our, our adjusted K factor. Now that it matches the transducer, we can save it by pressing the enter test button and it'll do like a, a countdown from five and you'll see it go five, four, three. And once it says set, you can let go and then it'll say good and it'll go back through the self test window and back to the main screen. So that's just to set K factors. So we're gonna recycle power and we're gonna go back through and we're gonna, we're gonna check all the rest of the settings so that we know how to con make sure it's configured correctly. So for this one, uh, this, this again is a, a single engine because it's a 912047T-38-D. This is a single engine uh, leaders indication and you can see the liters because on the face plate it says LPH, liters per hour. Gallons per hour would say GPH and it would be a 912041T-38-D. 
Um, and other part numbers will have different uh, numbers associated with it. But to start, what we're gonna do, you use the use remaining switch and that will cycle through the menus. So on the first one, it was the left-hand engine. We knew that was the left-hand engine from the L, L1994. Now, if we use the use remaining and we cycle up, we can see we have the right. Because this is a single engine indicator, the right engine either it could have a value, but more than likely it's going to be programmed to zero because there is you know no K factor for the right engine, right? So we're going to go use remaining again, and we see A. A is zero. So this is a frequency offset for analog models. This isn't used in this version of Microflow. So that A should be zero, should always be set to zero. And then the next one, B, this is for a right engine offset. Again, we don't use this because not for this model. So again, this should be a zero. We're gonna go to the next one. The next value is U. So U is uh, how the, the, get, the units are determined. This is set at the factory, it shouldn't be adjusted in the field. Um, but the designations for this one is, if U is set to zero, it would be a gallons indication. If it was set to one, it would be liters. And again, this is on page 26 of the manual. And you can see two would be pounds, 5.8 pounds per gallon. Three would be 6.7 pounds per gallon. Four would be kilograms. Five would be 6.5 pounds per gallon. And six would be 6.35 pounds per gallon. Because this is a liters indication and liters is on the display, it will be set to a one in this instance. If you had a 912041T-38-D, that would be a gallons indication because of the one, so that zero would be set to a zero, you know, or that U would be set to a zero. And again, that's just adjusted by, you know, using the add full switch. See, I can adjust it to a zero, but we want that set to a one because this is a leader's indication. So we're gonna keep on cruising by. We get to E, E is an engine type. Again, this is set at the factory because this is a single engine indicator. We uh, we're basically gonna leave this as zero for single engine. Again, if we use the add full switch, we can change that to a one. This would be twin engine indication. We obviously don't wanna do this in this instance because of the part number, but we're gonna set it back to zero. So E zero is for single engine aircraft, single engine indication, which is what this is. So we're gonna use remaining again. C zero, C is a low flow cutoff. This basically will make the indicator not display fuel flow below a certain value. And we don't turn this on from the factory, it's kind of a user preference. If you wanted the fuel flow uh, you know, to not indicate till it got to 10 pounds or 10 liters or you know, maybe a gallon or something like that, you could set that up on here. Right now we have it set for zero because we want it to indicate you know, start indicating fuel flow right away as soon as the, uh, you know, there's signal from the fuel flow transducer. Next value is uh, an O or a zero. This is a GPS output type. So GPS output type is, say you're interfacing the serial output of this unit with a, a Garmin or an Avidine or somebody else, you can basically set the output type here. The most common format is five. Uh, Garmin uses it, Avidine uses it, everybody that you know we pretty much interface with uses this type. So this from the factory is set up for a five. And as you can see here, uh, same thing, except for a five, you can use the add full switch to adjust it, but default from the factory is for a five. The next value is a I. This is G GPS Loran input type. This from the factory is set to a one and it should always be a one. Um, it's always expecting a GPS input, whether or not it's wired or not. When you uh, use the rotary knob here, the only mode that will work without a GPS type is endurance. All the other modes depend on a GPS input um, to work correctly. So if you don't have a GPS input, you'll just leave that knob in endurance. If you do, then you can use the other values, but you'd want that on if you're gonna use that GPS input. Um, to get that track position data from the GPS. Next value we're gonna move on to is D is in Delta. So this is your endurance warning time. From the factory, this is set for 45 minutes. Basically, it's taking the usable fuel based on your fuel flow and what you have fuel on board. And if, you, if that time runs below 45 minutes in that window to the right, um, when you're on the endurance screen, it'll basically give you a warning, a low fuel warning. You can set this up 
for five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, or 45 minutes. And when you look on page 26, it'll tell you what number is associated with what time interval. Again, from the factory, this is set for zero, just like it is right now. We're moving on to the next one. F is in Foxtrot. So this is your filter type. There's injected and carburetor as the options. From the factory, it's set for zero for injected. Um, carbureted does a little bit of smoothing to help you with some erratic fuel flow that carbureted engines tend to have a little bit more erratic fuel flow so it doesn't jump around as much. It'll just kind of smooth it out and sample it a little less often. Um, from the factory though, this is set for zero as it is right now. The next type is W. So W is ignore Loran warnings. Um, we leave this as zero, it should always be at zero um, and this should never change. Again, you can see it is zero right here. One is uh, for a specific type of GPS back in the Loran days. We don't use anymore, so W should always be configured as zero. So you never wanna change that value. The next one is uh, S. S is in Sierra. This is your low fuel level. So like the endurance warning from earlier, S is a, uh, a low fuel level warning where Basically, you can set a specific value of, gall you know, of gallons that you have left in the tank. So if the fuel on board goes below a certain value, it'll give you another low fuel warning. So well, there's one that's time-based and one that's volume-based on the amount of gallons per hour or gallons that you have in the tank. So you can see this one is currently set for 75 liters. Um, so once the, the fuel on board gets to 75 liters, it would set that you know, low fuel warning and then you'd have to acknowledge that before that value would go away. And again, this value is adjustable by just adjusting the value up and down with that add full switch. Um, we'll leave it at 75 for right now. And then you hit the use remaining switch again and you're back around to the, low, the left K-factor adjustment screen. So once you're done with all this programming, what you wanna do is hold that enter test button and it'll again, it'll do that countdown from five. And once it gets down to set, we can let go. So there you go, set, we let go, and it'll go back to, it'll say good, and it'll go back to that operation screen. So now what we wanna do, now we're back at this screen, we wanna shut the power off to the unit. So now power's off, go back to that, the, the second switch over, and then what we're gonna do, we're gonna change that back from an E to an F. So now our, our switch positions are F, F, zero, zero. This is the operations mode. F, E, zero, zero is how you get into the, the configuration, the maintenance mode essentially. But F, F, zero, zero is what it is for the operations mode. So now that we're back in operations mode, we'll plug it back in and it'll go through a self-test. And after it gets back to the main menu where it's indicating the fuel flow, and your endurance time, what we wanna do is we're gonna do a self-test. We wanna make sure that it programmed correctly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold the enter test button for a few seconds. It'll go through, it'll block out the display. As Soon as it gets done with that, let go. And you'll see a good, and then you're gonna see the K factors. So right now it's programmed for 19.9. The full, full fuel is programmed for 700 liters and then that was our software version so if we if it went too fast we want to do it again you just press and hold that enter test button again let go as soon as it blocks out the display and you're going to see good the k factor 19.9 liters and then fuel on board 700 and then our software version and then it'll go back to the operations menu. So that's how you program a uh, microflow. Like I said, it'll work for any part number of microflow as long as it's you know a, a T-38-D microflow, this will work just, just fine. And that's how you check your software version, your K factors, how you configure the unit. Um, and if you have any problems, you can contact support. Thanks.